So it feels right, doesn't it, on the kind of eve, if you like, of this visit by President Biden to the UK to look a little bit about that relationship between the UK and the US. How healthy is it right now? I think it's good. Uh, and I think the Windsor framework uh, lifted a cloud from it. Uh, President Joe Biden has always had strong attachments in Ireland. I think that was a big factor for him, the idea the Good Friday Agreement might have been undermined. That's out of the way now. He's seen Prime Minister soon accept. Times the UK is a leading ally on Ukraine, which is vital. Uh, it's an important friend for the US on China as well. So I think the relationship is in good shape. That's interesting about the important friend on China as well. Do you feel that perhaps Rishi Sunak is taking decisions to appeal to the US to try and make sure that alliance is healthy? I think he's very conscious that we've got to have a relationship with the Americans on economic security, uh, things like supply chains and AI and, and uh, those new technology issues, as good as the national security relationship. And so when he was in Washington, he had this Atlantic Declaration, which set out a whole lot of undertakings to work more closely with the Americans. In a way, they're already working with the Europeans. And on China, I mean, the UK, I think, understands perhaps better than some Europeans the importance of China for the US, and that if ever we got to a serious crisis over China, the UK would be an ally in doing everything we can to help. I guess Rishi Sunak is often seen as someone who is naturally affiliated to the US. He's obviously spent a lot of time there with his family as well. Do you think that's useful in this relationship? I think it's comfortable, yeah. I mean, he's, he works well with the Americans. We, we can never expect the Americans to be sentimental about the relationship with the UK, <laughs> and you can always overdo the personal factor. I mean, the fact is that President Biden works very closely as well with the Europeans, uh, with Australians, Japanese and so on. We are one of the allies, mm -hmm. um, but still a very useful one, and his visit to London, his visit to the King, is all symbolic of that. I guess I've always had a bit of a question mark about President Biden's view of the UK. So I'd be interested to sort of get your thoughts as well. You know, he's mispronounced Rishi Sunak's name a couple of times. He obviously had concerns over Brexit and Northern Ireland in particular. Do you think he really is someone who values that special relationship? Well, I'm always slightly nervous about this special relationship rhetoric. Mm. I mean, the Americans have many special relationships. They know they have to say that to the Brits because there's a right, slightly needy quality <laughs> about the UK. Uh, I think he sees us as an important ally. Uh, it's nothing like it was in the sort of Second World War period where we were the number one ally. Uh, yes, he has uh, strong Irish attachments, uh, but he's got many, many other fish to fry. And where the UK can be helpful in a transactional way, that's fine. Um, but we shouldn't expect any special favours. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Ukraine, shall we? Because we've got the NATO summit coming up. Uh, Ukraine obviously will be a big part of the discussions between yeah. uh, Rishi Sunak and Joe Biden. How big of an issue is this cluster bombs uh, factor? We've had both Rachel Reeves and Victoria Atkins criticising uh, the US decision, saying that they wouldn't have made it. You can feel the Allies are all very uncomfortable with this. 
Uh, we've all of us, apart from the Americans, signed up to the convention, which means we don't produce or stockpile or use these weapons. I mean, they are indiscriminate weapons, of course. I think we do owe it to the Ukrainians to understand why they need these weapons. You know, this offensive that they've launched, uh, there's a lot riding on it. If it stag stagnates, bogs down, the risk is this war will just continue. Um, they haven't had the level of precision munitions from the West they wanted. We haven't given them the fighter aircraft they wanted. Uh, and they see this as a potential game changer. This you know, admittedly horrible weapon is designed to use against dug in uh, entrenched forces. Um, and as I say, if they can't break through uh, in this fight, which is going on on their territory, this is weapons for use on their territory, then the risk is it will continue. So it's a hard choice for the kind that countries have to make in wartime. I'm uncomfortable with it. Yes, I wish it wasn't being done, but I think we can understand why they're doing it. Do you think perhaps, you know, just listening to you now, um, it's almost an admission that the Ukrainian counteroffensive isn't making the progress that it needs to? Yes, in a way, I think it is. Uh, I think you know, they have not had a breakthrough. That's probably not surprising, because the Russians spent the winter digging in. Uh, they know they need momentum. Uh, you know, they know with the NATO summit and, and allied eyes watching them, if it looks like it's bogging down, then Western support may begin to tail off. And, of course, they've got an eye on the American elections at the end of next year. So they're desperate to make progress, and I think they see this weapon as potentially helping on that. Talking about the American election, um, what's your kind of predictions, though? <laughs> Crystal ball time. Well, Come on, yeah, let's do yeah, it. That's a fool's game, isn't it? We're still a long way out. We're still a long way out. We are, out. that's true. I mean, right now, it looks like it could be a rerun between Biden and Trump, which seems extraordinary in a nation of 350 million people, uh, two men who are neither of them young. Um, it may change, but you know, that's the way it seems to be settling at the moment. And so even the fact that Trump is in the field... You know, we'll be sending jitters through allied capitals. That's it. Well, do you think through the UK you'll be sending a few jitters then as well? I would guess so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I often wonder what would have happened if Putin had launched the war in Ukraine while Trump was in the White House. And what do you think would have happened? Well, I don't know. I think the alliance would have been all over the place because I don't think we could have trusted Trump to take a sound decision, you know, on where allied interests lay. That's very interesting. Um, it's always difficult to frame this, this question in the correct way, but there are obviously concerns and questions in the US about... Joe Biden's age as well, and how sort of legitimate do you think they are? I mean, in a democracy, they are legitimate, of course. I mean, this is perhaps the most powerful job in the world, mm. uh, and people are going to pose that as a question. Uh, Trump is not all that much younger, actually, mm. in fact. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an issue. It will be tested and tested and contested in the American election process like no other, and we'll see if he comes through. Uh, really interesting to talk. Thank you very much for giving us your analysis on the programme this morning. Thank you. Thank you.